engineering geologist who knows plenty about quicksand. More easily formed in a situation where you have very fine sand. In fact, uh, geologists sometimes call it sugar sand. So most of your quicksand is in really fine grained sand. So Tom, the 20,000 pounds of sand we've got here, is this great for quicksand? Oh, uh, this is probably as good as it gets because it's very fine grained and, uh, and, and there, there's so much surface area here that when the water flows through it, it means the water can grab onto that and that'll create the quick condition. This irrigation pump can move up to 1,400 gallons of water a minute. But if it stops while Adam and Jamie are in the quicksand, the sand will suddenly compact, and the Mythbusters will have some pressing problems. Adam and Jamie are suddenly facing danger on two fronts. On one hand, the guys could be sucked under by killer quicksand, or they could be crushed. Tom's pointing out quite realistically that if the pump stops during the experiment we could die because we'll be encased in 20,000 pounds of sand uh, is cause for real concern. Before I talked to Tom, I wasn't that concerned about going into the quicksand, but I think he has a good point and we should be careful with this. Now the build team have got another myth that'll really get under your skin. You guys are going to love this one. Our next bit is called the exploding tattoo. Apparently, the myth goes that if you have some sort of decorative tattoo and go into an MRI, the tattoo explodes. Are you um, worried? <laughs> well, I'm assuming that you guys are going to put me into an MRI. Let's outline the situation. Tattoo ink, especially ink used more than 20 years ago, contains traces of metal. A magnetic resonance imager, or MRI, is basically a powerful magnet with a force at least 30,000 times greater than the Earth's magnetic field. When metal fragments in the tattoo meet the MRI magnet, so the story goes, the result is a lot more painful than actually getting the tattoo in the first place. So are you going to get an MRI? No. No? No. You understand that the job on Mythbusters is to put your body to the test, and being the one with tattoos, I think you need to go at least have an MRI on your arm. Come on, Scotty. Adam and Jamie are about to throw themselves into quicksand. The least you could do is stick your inked up arm in an MRI. After all, it is for science. My ghost dog. I think she actually looks scared. She looks cute in that nightgown. have heard the exploding tattoo story, but don't think Scotty will wind up incapacitated. One or two patients out of a hundred who have a tattoo and then and then I scan to have a reaction, but the reactions that have been described are all minor, consisting of a little bit of discomfort or some redness at the tattoo, but nobody has described uh, exploding tattoos. Do you think it's possible that the magnetic field is inducing some sort of current in the pigments or in the material in the tattoo? It's possible, but it seems unlikely because usually to get induced currents you need lengths of wire or loops, so it's hard to see how these tiny particles could have currents induced in them, but nobody can say it's not happening for sure. Are you okay? What's that smell? It smells like sizzling bacon. At the first sign of trouble, the scan will be stopped. Looks like a, looks like a T-bone steak. Yeah. An MRI scan targets the body's billions of hydrogen atoms. The atoms line up with a strong magnetic field and are then bombarded by radio waves. The radio waves are absorbed by the atoms and the resulting signal sent to a computer, which turns the data into a 2D image. Is there any distortion in the image or sign of the tattoo? No. No? Scotty's arm full of ink is still intact. No pain, no discomfort, no explosion. No, well, you're looking all right. But of course, the tattoo myth ain't busted yet. The build teams barely scratched the surface. We still have to bust this myth. It looks like we're going to have to do some experiments. We're going to have to get the compounds that go into all of these pigments and test them individually to find out what could cause any sort of irritation or explosion. So what goes into tattooing? The pigments are a potpourri of chemical
chemical compound, including iron oxide, zinc oxide, and titanium dioxide. So the theory is, is the metallic components that are used in tattoo pigments have been having some reactions with the MRI magnetic field. So what we have here are a couple of those components. We have iron oxide, we have the copper and the zinc, and the mercury. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to expose some of these materials to a strong electromagnetic field. We can see if the pigments line up with the magnetic field. Secondly, if uh, the theory is that there's sort of a current being induced, there's a voltmeter to check for that. And of course, if the pigments are creating some sort of excitation in the skin and heating it, we have a thermometer to check and see if there's any temperature difference. Which compound is the culprit? One by one, they're tested. Okay. Copper and zinc. But only one iron oxide reacts to the magnetic field. After all of that testing, it looks like iron oxide is definitely the culprit here. I mean, you could see it just moving over the magnetic field. It would line up. Well, we still need to make a tattoo explode. So what I'm thinking is we'll make our own ink, mix in some iron oxide, make it a thick batch, and then tattoo someone. I figured you'd be the good no. person to try it on. No.